Good evening, everyone. I hope everyone is um, okay and fine. So today we're going to start our revision class. Uh, as you know, like uh, uh, we're going to complicate this truth. And uh, today we're going to practice the whole portion. So we're trying to cover every single portion from the book, every single area, at least one portion from the book, and we'll try to see a exam type of portion. So I'm going to take a question from the question bank. Uh, I'm sure like I have sent this question bank or practice question to all of you, but um, if you didn't receive it yet from me, you can email me. I can uh, resend to you if you didn't receive it. But today we are going to practice uh, this assessment that is sample assessment one from the question bank. So this sample assessment one exactly um, the question we're going to um, we're going to see in the exam, so it's the exam type of question, and it will help us to understand what type of question we are expecting in the exam, and uh, how many marks we're expecting from uh, which chapter, what type of question are normally coming in the exam, and how long it takes to answer this question. So all of this, uh, once you practice this full question today. Hopefully, um, you'll have an overview about this book. So you'll have an overview um, about this book. This is very important. And uh, uh, we're going to see that, uh, how could we solve uh, more portion. We're going to see how to solve more portion from uh, this portion bank. So if you practice one, you will see the next one. The next practice will not be difficult that way. Okay, so I hope like everyone joined. Maybe not many people joined today, but uh, the revision class is very important. I don't know why, like sometimes students don't want to come for the revision, but the revision actually is very important to us. Uh, on this revision, you have actually to see uh, what type of question expect in the exam you have a real question from this practice question. It's very important, like anytime if you do any paper for your uh, level three, level four, make sure you never miss the revision class. It's the most important class. Sometimes the student think, I haven't read the book yet, and I'm not ready for the exam, so what's the point of doing the revision class? This is absolutely like, uh, absolutely like I would say, that, you know, there is no reason you can miss that. Uh, you should always uh, practice the question. Once you read something, you have a knowledge. Once you read from the book, it gives you knowledge, but actually, unless you do some real practice, it will not help you to pass in the exam. It's very important, just not only you uh, just read the books, take the class, but do not uh, do practice. So it will not really help you. If you, you keep forgetting even the things you know, you already know, Still, you cannot answer it if you don't have enough practice. It's very important, like you always uh, join for the practice class or revision class. Uh, for the exam, uh, hopefully, like uh, in, uh, next month, that means end of the June, uh, all the center will be reopened. Uh, we have a uh, we have a message from the AG, and they he said most likely uh, end of the June. Most likely, end of the June, we will be uh, able to uh, sit for exam. So I hope, like uh, all of you, can uh, uh, assume like end of the June, uh, you could sit for exam, and hopefully, like end of the June, we can come back to the class again. So if the situation gets better, hopefully, uh, maybe uh, end of the next month, we're gonna come back to the class again and uh, maybe the next paper uh, after the indirect tax that we're going to start from next week. Maybe after that, we're going to uh, sit in the class once again. We'll see, but uh, make sure you uh, get ready for the exam. And one more thing, like uh, once you complete the course, uh, make sure you keep it, like make sure you are in keeping touch with that. If you leave it for long, if you leave it for long, um, you might forget it. And you might be like, uh, it's not going to be possible, like if for exam, to take the preparation for everything. So make sure when you uh, finish one chapter, you keep in touch before the exam. And if the exam is in, even after one month, 
what I'll do before uh, before the exam date is declared. For example, if it is first of July, or if it is like first week of July or second week of July, I'll try to arrange another revision class. I will try to arrange the question and answer session with all of you. If I'm sure, like once you do another paper in the middle, we'll be bit behind. But before we doing the exam, I'll try to arrange a session for like for the revision purpose, so that we can uh, revise all of this once again. So hopefully we'll do that. Uh, if if we know the date for the exam, we'll do that. We'll once again revise some more questions so that we we revise ourselves. We memorize everything before that, and but we'll do some practice together. Uh, today I'm going to start with that uh, eight assessment, uh, sample assessment number one, that you can find on your uh, question bank. On your question bank, that will be end of the uh, book. Of course, we know it, and uh, we're going to try sample assessment one today. There are more sample assessment, but if you practice one, you will be able to um, practice more assessment. So very important to understand one very well next to one will not be that difficult okay so let's start with that let's start with question number one okay so i'll give you two minutes just read the question very slow and after that, we'll do it together. We can see this one, this question from um, inventory evaluation that is uh, Leap of it and F4, that one we already covered from the book. Uh, we can see here in task one, they said there is 16 marks. So we are expecting if there is a question from this area, we are expecting uh, 16 marks from this question. So 16 marks is uh, quite a um, quite big mark. So we need to make sure we are very happy with this structure and we understand everything. Let's read this question. Pressed paint limited had the following container of red pigment in inventory. Date of purchase. We have all the date. That is our purchase date. Then the quantity. We have all the quantity here. And after that, we have cost per container. This is the cost per container and the total cost. After that, the requirement here is drag and drop. Drag and drop the correct cost into the cost column of the table below to record issuing of 350 of this container on 11 December and to record the inventory balance after the, after the issue using. But there are a few important points I want all of you to understand it. If you know where is the trick, what you're exactly looking for, then that's going to be very easy for you to get the answer. Rather than looking everywhere and think everything is important, this is not. Everything is not important. We're looking for some specific information. And if you look at the question, if you look at the question, we, we need to understand from this question what i'm exactly looking for that's very important if i know what i'm looking for it's not going to be hard so once you read the question once you read the requirement you have to be know by yourself i know what i'm looking for from this question so there is some uh, important information here the first one is issue value of 350 units. this is the first important information for this question issuing 350 units so how much will be the cost for that the next important important information here is 11th of december now i can see 
the date I have November, December, and 10th of December. So I have up to 10. So 11 comes after 10, isn't it? 11 is the closing in the jury. That means when they say like 11th of December, that means they are asking the last day. On the last day, how much is the value for the inventory? So we are talking here. 11, that means after 10, that means we're looking for the closing inventory. So if something is clear for me, we are looking for the value of the closing inventory. After that, they said using Apple, that is average. Then the next one they said using people, first in, first out. Both methods are very popular and both methods are like EFM data. So we would say in the exam, this is the true method we will see in the exam. You're not gonna see the LIFO. LIFO is hardly used. LIFO, some countries even ban LIFO. LIFO are not allowed to use. So um, I can say that most of the time in the exam or in your workplace, either the company will follow LIFO or either the company will follow Apple. Okay, okay let's have a look at that. So we have Apple and Pico. The first requirement here is Apple issue. So issue value of Apple then issue value of FIFO, then AFCO balance and FIFO balance. That means how much is the cost if I use the AFCO for this issuing 350 unit? How much will be the cost if I use FIFO for 350 unit? How much will be the balance? Balance means from all this unit, if I issue 350, so the leftover unit, so for example, if I added all of this, if it's 1,000, from 1,000, if I take away 350, because 350 I'm going to issue, whatever is left over, how much is the value for that? So balance means after issuing, whatever is left over with you, this is your balance. So how much will be the value of the balance if I use Apple? And how much will be the balance if I use people? All right, so let's have a look. Let's start with our after issue. After is the average. After issue. Remember, after is the average. After is the average value. So in after, all you need to do, you need to find the average price of the unit. So how many unit you have purchased so far? How, how many unit you have? And how much is the total cost? And if you divide with the total cost with the number of units, it will give you the average cost per unit. So what we're going to do, we'll add all the cost, we'll add all the unit. So let's add all the cost cost, that is 4480, plus 2704, that is 4,464. This is my total cost, and my total unit here, 280, plus 320, plus 160. So that is my 700, uh, 760 is my total unit. So let's get the price. How much is the actual cost? If I divide with that, 12,400 and 4,464 divide 760, that will give me 16 pound 40 pence. So that is my average price. Per unit. Average price per unit. Now they're asking how much will be the value for the after issue? How many units I'm going to issue? 350, isn't it? So let's do the first one, number one. After issue. So we said 350 units and our unit will be 1640. So 350 
my total value will be for f3 still 5, 7, 4, 7. And right here, 5, 7, 4, 7. Basically, in the exam, we have to put from here, but we want to check. Do you have anything math here? We can see here 5740. This is the answer for the first one. All you need to do is to drag it and drop it on the right box. Number two, they're asking uh, equal issue. Uh, we can do one thing, we can do this one, or we can finish the F for balance. So, whatever you like. I want to go with the F for balance because all the I calculate for the F for. I want to finish the after pass. So I have total 760 units if I added all of this, total 760. So from 760 units, if I take away the 350, the number of units left over, that is 760 minus 350, that is 410. 410. 10 units is my balance. So 410 times our unit is 16.40, and that will give me 6724. So my after balance will be. That's my total unit. That's the number of unit I have used to. Then I'll move to my next one that is FIFO. Number three. FIFO issue. We can see here we issue 350 units. So we need to issue 350 units. And this 350 unit we have to choose as the first in, first out basis. FIFO means first in, first out. So who, who came first, need to go first. So the inventory we have purchased first, we need to issue that one first. So the first inventory we receive on November, 28th of November, that is 280 units. I'm gonna take all of this, 280, and I'm gonna charge 16 pound per unit, that is 16, so that will be Total 4.0. I need some more units. So from 350, if I take 280 from November, I still need 70 units. And 70 units. Then I'm going to take from here, isn't it? The next one. I'm going to take 70 units from here. So I'm going to charge for 70 units 16 pounds 50 pence. So I said 16.5, 16.5, that would be 1155, 1155, and the total will be, so I said 0 plus 1155, that would be 5635, 5635, and that would be my fifth issue. Five, six, two, five. The last one we have, fee for balance. The same thing, how many units we have sold? So we have sold 350 from 760 total unit. We have 410. So we're going to get the value of the 410. So 410 units is the balance. Out of the 410, from the December, we have leftover from 320 to 670. So we have left here 250. Here I have left over 250 because I took already 70 from here. So 250 times 16.5. And I have pulled this unit because I never used that. 160 times 16.9. That will give me 27.04, and here, 250 times 
I hope all the answer we have from the workings is it here. So 5740, I have it here. 5635, I have it here. 67 and 24, 67 and 24, you can see it here. 6829, 6829, you can see it here. When the exam, you have to hold it and just drop it on the right box. And it will give you, like, it will allow you to keep it there. But the workings, you have to do yourself. So you need to be very careful, like if you've done a mistake, there is some extra or additional answer in here. Even if you've done the mistake, you might end up with the wrong answer. And those we know what will be the wrong answer. If they keep the wrong answer here as well, so you can pick the wrong answer. So you need to make sure you're 100% sure whatever workings they are doing is absolutely correct. This is for your 16 marks, isn't it? So it's not difficult at all. You can see it is very straightforward, very easy. If this type of question comes in the exam, you shouldn't worry at all. That's really straightforward. All right, so I hope everyone understands this one. If you have anything on your mind, you can write it down for me on the box. I can try to explain. But I don't think so. Is there anything complex here? You understand it. And uh, we can move on to the next question. So let's move on to our next question. On tax number two. Tax number two. Let me see which, from where this question is coming from. Let's read the question first. I always prefer in the exam, read the requirement first. In the exam, try to read the requirement first because it will help you to understand what you're exactly looking for. If you don't read the requirement, if you just read the question and at the end you read the requirement, and you need to read the question once again. So it's better always you read the requirement first, then you go back to the question. Let's have a look here. Complete the cost journal entries to Record the full payroll payment made last week. Now, I'm sure all of you are very, very familiar with this word, payroll. So payroll is the wages and salary account, isn't it? So all the payroll, all the payroll is go to where? Which account? Wages, central account. I'm sure all of you done your level two on the book to control you have this thing, wages control, payroll, payroll, always, all the cost is attached to the wages control account. So any cost, any cost belongs to payroll, always goes to wages control account. And your wages control account is always a liability account as a credit. Wages control account, always a liability account, and that's why it's always credit. So every time if you said um, uh, what is expense debit, what is control credit, then HMRC expense debit, PYE debit, what is control credit. So what is control is always there unless unless you reduce the liability by paid. Unless the question said this is done, this is done, that is all your liability. What is control is a liability account. So as an employer, as a business, the business have a liability to pay the wages to the employee, the tax to the HMRC, and pension to the pension office. Let's read the question now. So we have here, we have uh, the date and the labor cost. So 8th of December, paint manufacturer, production employee pay 590 hours at 10 pound per hour. 
Lactic acid is easy. How much will be the total? 592 times 10 per hour. I would say I'll just add one more zero. So 592, one more zero. So 5,900. That's my production employee. That my wages and salary is for the production. So which department belongs? Same kind of picture. So I would say in manufacturer debit 5,900 and wages control debit. Remember, wages control is always there. If you find your debit, you know the credit will be wages control. If you know what is a debit, your credit will be always wages control. Then uh, 10 December, let's have a look what happened here. I said canning, canning and packing. Production employee basic pay 5,600 plus 500. So if I added this to that will be 6,100. This is yeah. yes, for the canning and packing production employee again. So I'm going to write the department name that is canning and packing. Canning and packing. And I'm going to write 6,100 credit and my wages control. Don't lose the credit, that is 6,100. 12 of December, I have a store department. Store department, basically the operational department. Store department, basically operational department. This employee pay 2,000 plus 15 percent bonus. So we can calculate that. Is it 2,000 times 15 percent? That is 300. So if I added this, pay plus bonus. So this is 300 is a bonus. 15 percent of 2,000. Total will be 2,300. So store department is the operational overhead. Please remember by that. Store department is the operational overhead. This is not the direct cost. Indirect cost is overhead. This is operational overhead. Operational overhead OVH. That is 2300. And wages control. 2300. Is credit. Then the last one we have 14 December. On 14 December, we have general admin that is our non production overhead, a non operational overhead, non operational overhead. Staff salary is 4000 plus 20 percent bonus. So let's calculate that 4000 times. 20% that is 800. So I would say 4,800. 4,800 is the total. So non operating, non operating overhead that is 4,800 debit and wages control is always credit. Wages. Control 4800. That's all is credit. So, all you need to find out what is debit because always this control is always credit. That's how we can complete our payroll cost journal for this all department for all these cost types. This question normally do not come in the exam, but if it does come. You'll be lucky. All you need to find it out what is the bit and you know what is going. Turn us move to the next question. Okay, task three. Can everyone please uh, read this task three? And uh, I'll give you two minutes to read the question. After that, we'll start. We'll do it together.
All right, so let's read this together now. It says, that's a 12 month portion. Employees work in teams. The employees work in teams of five employees. So five employees in one team. Of five employees, okay. In the packing section of this pen limited, they are paid the basic rate 12 pounds per hour. If they work one hour, they receive 12 pounds. And any overtime is paid at the following rate. If there is any overtime, we we'll use the following rate. What is the following rate here? Overtime rate one and overtime rate two. The first one you can see here, basic pay plus 50%. So that means basic pay is 12. If I add 50%, that will be six, isn't it? 50% of 12, that will be six. So over time, rate one will be 18 pounds per hour. The next one they said, over time rate two, double the rate of basic pay, so double. I would say 12 times two, we can say that will be 24. Over time rate one, that is 18. Over time rate two, that will be 24. CPL, sets a target for packing box of paint each month so they have a target the bonus equal to 25 percent of the basic hourly rate so 25 percent of the basic hourly rate so 25 percent i would say 12 times 25 percent so 12 times 25 percent that is three Here's the bonus. Table for every box packed in the month in excess of the target. So if you can fulfill the target and for every box, you'll get a bonus that is 25% of your basic salary. The target for December for team three was 24.75 box. That was the target for team three. The team actually packed 2,775 box. They obviously they fulfill the target and they exceed the target. If they exceed the target, they'll get some bonus, isn't it? So let's find it out how many boxes they make extra or how many boxes they make excess of the target. So 2775 minus 2475. So let's find out that 2775 minus 2475, that is 300. So 300 boxes excess. They'll get some bonus. Five boxes, they'll get three. And we can assume the bonus will be 900 per box. You don't know, but uh, is there any question for the bonus or not? But you understand 300 box excess, so we say 300 pound, 3 pound per box will get 900 pound more. All team members work the same number of hours. All overtime and bonus are included as part of the diet level. Test. That's fine. Basic pay, 700 hours. How much would be the basic, uh, like, uh, payment for the basic pay? So you already know, 700 hours per hour, just 12, isn't it? Per hour, just 12 pounds. So 700 times 12, that will be 8,400. 8,400. This is our basic pay. Then, over time rate one, 60 hours. Over time rate one is 18 pounds per hour. Is it times 18? 60 times 18. That is 1080. Over time rate two, that is 24. So 24. 80 
124 by the 720. And total cost before the bonus. So total hour, you can see here 70 plus 60 plus 30, that is 790. And the total cost, if I add it, let's add this one, 8,400 plus 1080 plus 720. That is 10,200. 10,200. This is my total cost. Now looking for the bonus payment that you already know, 900. And the last one, they say total cost, including the bonus. If I added 900 with that, my total cost is 1,1,1. This is my calculation for the labor cost. Now let's look at the number B. In B, they said, Calculate the total labor cost of packing each box in the month of in the, in the month of December. The total labor cost of packing each box the month of December. So okay, they said there are five employees in the team. Because you know it already. So how much will be the total cost? So let's look at this one. We have total cost is. One 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 zero, and we have how many employees have? You see, five employees. Total labor cost to pack each box. How many boxes do we have to do? Two thousand seven hundred and seventy-five boxes. So let's find out how much is the cost. For each box making two seven seven and five. So we can see here four pound per cost. How did you get it? So you can find how many box they make actually. So you can see here they actually make two thousand seven hundred seventy five box and the total cost is this. So you can understand basically uh, the per box cost will be four. So this divides the number of boxes. So I have to go down, let's go down, let's see what application we have here. Okay, the next one they said here, complete the following sentence. The basic pay and overtime for each member of the team how much it will be that? Now, um, I hope I uh, remember the basic is that this of the bonus. So let's say 10,000. So for the team member, so let's try to calculate that. So we have 10,200. How many employees have? Five. That is 20404 each. So total cost before the bonus for the basic was 10,200. We have five employees. So five members will get 2040 each. And the next one says, and the bonus table to each member. How much was the bonus total? The bonus was total 900. If I divide by five. 900 is uh, it should be 185 for a part member. Total bonus is 900, and if there is five member on the team, everyone will get 180. And this for the bonus, the basic pay will be 2040 pound each member. That is 2000, 10,200 divided by five. And the bonus is total 900, we divide by five, we get 180. Uh, okay, so I think still this is not difficult, so you can do that. You can uh, solve this question and you can have math. It's a very uh, common question in the exam. I've seen so many times this question come in the exam. So you can make sure there will be always a question from the labor cost in the exam. 
Okay, let's look at this one. This portion is tax code is from, okay, from the apportionment. This is an interesting question. This question will be look like it bigger, uh, but the portion will not be difficult. I'm telling you, the portion will not be difficult. It's 18 marks. It's a big portion, obviously. We can see the whole big portion, but if we know how to do it, it shouldn't be difficult for us. So don't stay if you see the portion like 18 marks. You have to make sure you are very good with this reapportionment. Okay, let's take one minute to read this question and try to get answer on your head. Then we'll quickly do it do together. Let's read this question. I'll give you one minute. Just try to guess the answer. I'm sure all of you will get the right answer. You will do just the overhead and the basis of apportionment. Then I will solve it with you again together. Just take one minute, just to read the question. Okay, so the first one here we have that is uh, depreciation of mixing equipment. Depreciation always relevant to the carrying value of the equipment. Depreciation is always relevant to the carrying value. Remember that. Depreciation is always relevant to the carrying value. Now, as the question is specified for the mixing department, we have to look for the carrying value of the mixing department. We cannot take the carrying value of the whole uh, equipment. We'll take only the carrying value for the mixing department. Let's have a look. So what is the carrying value we have? So we have carrying value for mixing department, carrying value for the clean department. We want to take carrying value for the mixing department. So carrying value mixing department. So to apportion this overhead, the most appropriate basis is carrying value of mixing department. Next one I have, rent and rates of production department. Rents and rate always go with the factory space, remember that. So rent and rates always go with the floor factory area. So don't take any specific like for the head of this for a kitchen. No, when I say rent and rates, because the rent and rates is belongs to the whole building. The rent and rates belongs to the whole building. If you're talking about the rent, they don't give the rent in a specific room or piece for the kitchen for the for the head of this. So rent is for the whole building. Even the rates from the council is from the whole building. So we need to look at the whole floor space area. We're going to look at the factory floor space. Factory floor space. So factory floor space. Quality control cost. It will be depend how many times you did the quality control. Isn't there an inspection? If you do more inspection, the cost will be more. Less inspection, less cost. Quality control cost will say number. There it is. Number of quality control inspection. Number of number of quality control inspection. So how many times you carried out the inspection? Obviously, the cost will be apportioned by that number. Canning equipment maintenance cost. Maintenance means service, isn't it? So how much is the maintenance cost? How are we going to apportion it? We're going to see how much time you spend to maintain this. How how long is take? For example, for uh, for uh, maintaining it, it's like one hour, two hour, five hour. It is five hour divided by five, five hundred hour divided by five hundred. So number of hour or number of time you spend, it will be um, it will be um, relevant to the maintenance cost, isn't it? Because maintenance is all about service so how long it takes to do the service now for example if someone said i can fix it i can maintain it within one hour maybe the cost will be low 
if someone said no for maintenance this building or equipment i need like 5k so the cost will be more so look for the time spent this department planning so it's a time spent servicing planning equipment how long is it to do the service for the planning department is a time spent planning equipment then we have planning equipment insurance cost insurance cost always relevant to the value of the product how much is the value Canning equipment is a carrying value. We'll look for the carrying value. This department canning is a carrying value of the canning equipment. Carrying value of the canning equipment. The carrying value of canning equipment. This is the most appropriate basis. This word is most appropriate. Why right? is the most appropriate? because this is just like this is not something very certain sometimes like when you have a floor area you take the floor area sometimes for the you know, rent and rates if they didn't get the floor area they get the floor floor volume to take the volume so this is most appropriate you take the most appropriate basis to get the most accurate figure for the apportionment of this over here this is the part one. We have done it. We have another part in the bottom. Let's have a look at that. will be for the reapportionment. I'm not sure this portion is relevant to here in the bottom or not. Let's read this one. Uh, Chris Paint Limited has already allocated, so allocation is already done. And a portion is current overhead cost for the next quarter. So they already done the apportionment, they already done the location, what they want from us. And as shown in the table below, okay, this cost have, have yet to be reapportioned. Oh, okay, that's the only one left for us. We have to reapportion it to the to profit center of paint manufacture and planning. So this this information is very, very important. They're asking. To reapportion all the overhead to this two profit center, and I have two profit center. Number one is paint manufacture, number two is canning and packing. So normally, what you do, we reapportion all the service department costs. We reapportion all the service department costs to the what the manufacturing department, isn't it? So all the service department costs we move to the production department or manufacturing department so the question will tell us very clearly you have to follow the question even though we know what to do but still we're going to read the question to make sure we are doing the right way this question you need to read it very slowly so that you don't make any mistake so you don't want to do any mistakes so you want to make sure you read it slowly and we try to understand the question okay let's take the requirement first Complete the table by reapportioning cost on the basis of the information given above. Enter your answer in whole pound only. Indicate negative figure with minus sign, not the bracket. Each sale in the bottom five will must have been entry in the order to gain the full mark. So basically asking to make the total. To get the total, so you want to get the full mark. Okay, that's fine. So I'll give you a, a minute just wait to read the question, look at the question, then we'll do it together. You can see it one page, hopefully. Yes. Let's just take a minute to look at it, then we'll do it together. <clears throat> All right, so let's read this question.
we have two profit departments that one already said in the question number one paint manufacturing number two penny and packing and we have one two three we have three overhead that is service department overhead is all the costs have to come here so all these three one two Okay. All the service department costs have to be apportioned to this two profit center. So let's do this one. But before I put the number here, I want to see and read the question. Let's read the question. That general admin department. So we start with here from the new one. The general admin department surveys the two profit center the maintenance department and store department. So obviously start from here, they said, general admin department services the two profit centers. So they, this general department, they basically, they give services to these two departments. One is the maintenance and one is store. We understand this is a step down method, isn't it? Step down. Because one department, one department cost will be reapportioned to the next department, from next department to next department. So when we follow the step, we call this step down method. It's not a direct method. All right, that's fine. These costs are to be reapportioned. So they're asking to reapportion this cost. Which one? The general admin. So they're asking to reapportion the general admin cost. So we will do that. So, uh, right. 30% to paint manufacture, so 40% to paint here, and 40% to canning and packing, okay, 40% to canning and packing, 10% to maintenance, and 10% to store. So basically, out of 100%, the 40% will go to paint manufacture, so PM. 40% to canning and packing, so canning and packing, 10% to maintenance, and 10% to store, isn't it? That's fine. Let's do this one, that's not a problem. So we have, how much is the total general admin cost you have? So you are doing this one first. If I look at the total, the total cost we have here, what the channel has been overhead, that is 674. So 674, 674,000. 674,000. And 40%, I'm going to give you PM that is paint manufacturer, so that will be two six nine six hundred two six nine six hundred. Then another forty percent will go to city that is canning and packing. So I'm, I will understand that same, isn't it? Forty percent. So two six nine six hundred. Then ten percent to maintenance and ten percent to store. So let's do the 10% of that. 674. Then 1000. And 10%. So you said 67,400. 67,400. And that will be again 67,400. This is also 10%. So all this cost, I am reapportioning to all this department. 40% to paint manufacture, 40% to canning and packing, and 10% to store and 10% to maintenance. So let's do this one. We're going to write here on this column, the apportion of general admin. So 269, 600, 269, 600, and 67, 400. 67, 200, 67, 200. Make sure you check yourself as well with the calculator so that you can double check 
Marking the right figure. Two, six, two, seven, four, five, and this one is gone, isn't it? Because we reapportion all of this. So this one will be gone from the right. Six, 74. I'm going to put the bracket. Or it's minus, so it is gone. The question is with the minus, so I'm going to take the minus one of the bracket. Then, they said next one is the real portion is stored. So this one is done, number one. I'm coming here, number two. Number two is stored. The store, the store costs are reapportioned on the basis of inventory requisition, okay? The paint manufacturer profit center expect to have, okay, the paint will be this, eight pairs of requisition and canning and tracking center have expected to have five part two requisition from the two. So basically, the store will go to Paint and hanging and packing. That's fine. So let's do this one. This is going to use the basis of inventory requisition. How many inventory for manufacturer for the paint? 8280. How many requisition for the canning? 5520. So let's do this one then. So we need to find for the paint. The paint manufacturing will say the requisition is 8280, 8280 plus for the canning is for the canning is 5520. So let's add this to so plus. 5520 is 13,800. The total 13,800 requisition. So from the 13,800, so I will say 8280 divide 13,800 times the total cost will go for paint and scanning and packing will be 5520. Divide 13,000 and what is the cost? And before we do this, how many the cost isn't it? Let's have a look how much is the total cost for the store because we have something new. Before that, it was 336, but as we already apportioned some of the admin costs inside of the store, so the new store cost will be a bit higher than the previous total. So I will have a new figure here. I'm going to add this to. I'm going to add 236 plus 67400. So 236,000 plus 67400. That is 403. 403 400. And that I'm going to put minus because this one I'm going to speak to here and here. I'm going to say 403. Three four hundred. So three four hundred. So let's do this one. Eight two eight two five eight two eight zero divide thirteen thousand eight hundred times four zero three and then four hundred. So two four two. Zero four zero. So two four two 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 zero four zero four for pain. Two four two zero four zero. And for the canning would be the same way. That is five five two zero divided thirteen thousand eight hundred and four zero two four hundred. That would be one six one three sixty. One Six one two hundred and sixty. So this is also gone. My store is also gone. Now I only have some maintenance. So let's have a look what is the maintenance we said here. The maintenance state, the maintenance department, 
the maintenance department reapportion cost on the basis of maintenance hour, okay? Paint department, the paint manufacturing profit center, expect to use 7,000 hour, and canning expect to use 5,000. We're gonna use the same formula, the same way we're gonna add it this to, and we're gonna reapportion the cost. So we would say 7,000 plus 5,500, so 7,000 plus 5,500, that is 4,500. So 500, we're going to say 7,000 divided 4,500 times, let's find the cost, 356 plus 67,400. 356,000 plus the new one from the admin, 67,400. That will be 423,400. 423. 400. And that's minus because this will be finished. I'm going to split this one over there. So let's do this one 403 400. So how much will be here? 7000 divided 12,500 times 403 403 400. That is that is two. Yeah, that is two thirty seven, two hundred and thirty seven, one zero four. Make sure you do the calculation very carefully because all this information is not difficult, but the calculator might give you some wrong figure and because of that other part will be messed up. And you need to make sure you take enough time when you answer this question because when you answer, maybe because of the calculator mistake, you'll take the wrong figure and this paper will be marked by the computer. So the computer will not know, like you make some, just a simple error, simple mistake, because you'll lose the mark if you don't get the accurate figure. And this one we have same way 5,500 divide 12,500. So 5,500 divide 12,500 times 403, 400. So that will give me 186. 186.200. Okay, so. This three is gone, so I'm, I put the minus here, that means this is gone, this is gone, and this is gone. This is a step down method. This is a step down method. You can see it's, it's, it's step by step, one overhead we are reapportioning to the profit center. So now at the bottom, we can say this one is vanished now, this one is vanished, this one is vanished, because all three, all three I have split it here. To the, to the pen and to the pen. After that, all you need to do, you need to add it all of this. So we'll add it all of this. So we'll add it all of this and get the total, just the total. That's not difficult. You can add it, you can calculate all of this and you find the total. So this is kind of, you see the question is really, really big, but I would say that this is not difficult. That's just a very simple question. But once you look at the question, don't it scare. If you see the real portion question, do not be scared, try to break it try to break it, try to find what is your uh, service department. So you need to find these three parts. Then you need to split all of this here. It will step down method, do one by one. And just follow this one, what the person says. Follow the instruction, do slowly, slowly, that will be really good. How do I get 403, 400? Uh, for the uh, store three months, this one, okay? So if we added all of this, so let's say this, three, three, six, C36 equal zero plus 67400. This should be added this to the it will give you the answer. You just add it with that because the new admin, some portion come here and the new store is become new one. So it's, it was before 
3,336,000. Now, some portion of the general admin also come here, 10%. That's why the new one is called the okay. Same here as well. If you add this, it will be very clear. And same here as well. This one have nothing, so just the last one. So this two. All right, so I hope you understand it. It's not a difficult question, just looks like big. Something is looks big doesn't mean it's difficult. So uh, don't uh, don't take it like uh, very like uh, kind of big. So make sure you um, you understand it. It's very important. This question is always in the exam, always in the exam. All right, shall we move on? So let's move on to the next question. Let's see what else you have. I have the party yet, so let's read this one. Let's make it this video. Okay, let's read this question. There's another overhead in machine running cost. Okay, there is another overhead that is a machine running cost. The estimated cost for the next quarter is this okay, whatever this is 30. I would say 630. So the estimated cost for the next quarter, so overhead cost for the next quarter is 630, which consists of fixed and variable elements. So inside of the 630, some portion is fixed, some portion is variable. That's fine. The fixed element is 60%, or already said it, so fixed is 60%, and the variable should be 40. Okay. The fixed element of the total cost is to be apportioned between pain manufacturer and the canning and packing profit center. Ratio 56 44. Okay, whatever we get here, from there we have to apportion it to two departments. So, for example, if my fixed code is 100, this 100 I have to speak to two departments one for the paint, one for the canning. And the ratio is 56 44. And for the variable amount, they said again. Take the two department by using the ratio 62 38. So it's, it's not difficult. The difficult part is when the question gives you this cost and they don't say anything how much is the fixed and how much is the variable. Then you have to use the high low method to find it out how much is the variable and how much is the fixed. So let's do this one then. So let's do the 60% of that. So 630. Times sixty percent. That is six hundred and thirty times sixty percent. That is three hundred and seventy-eight. Three hundred and seventy-eight thousand. Just my fix. And six hundred and thirty times forty percent. That is two hundred and fifty thousand. There's two more zero here. So six hundred and forty percent. So that is my fixed portion. So let's write it down here. That's my fixed portion. That is 37, 8, 0. And the variable portion is, we write it from the below here. Variable cost, 252, 0. So I have split this one. According to the question, said 60, 40. So I know 60% is a fixed. They said already here. And 40% uh, variable. So I already split this cost. Now the next question they said, if in this fixed cost, fifty-six percent will go to paint and thirty-four will go to canning. So I'll say from here, fifty-six percent will go to paint and thirty-four percent will go to canning. But the variable they said sixty-two percent. 62 percent will go to paint and 38 percent go to canning. That's all right. Let's see the requirement. What is the requirement? Complete the following sentence when starting the type values. All right. The fixed element of the machine running cost that will be apportioned to the paint manufacturing profit. So they're asking for the fixed portion for the paint. Fixed portion for the paint. So we can do that. For so fixed portion, this is my total fixed from here. But the paint is 56%. So I would say 378,000 times 
Okay. That is two one one six eight zero two one one six eight zero. The fifty fifth person of that two one one six eight zero. So I would say you know they don't have to do it here. So this is person. The fifty fifth person. The fifty fifth person. The next one they said the variable element, the variable element of the machine running cost that will be apportioned to the canning. So variable element, variable is this one, isn't it? And canning, the first one is canning, next one is canning. So canning is 38 percent. So 38 percent, you know it already. How much is the total? 252. So 252 times 38 percent. 252. And that is ninety five seven six eight that's it so this is very easy question where your speed are some variable some fixed then then after that they said from there some portion for this department for this department we need to just keep on the track if you don't forget it just keep on the track then just a just calculation so the question can come in the exam because remember they can ask you to identify your uh, uh, fixed and variable cost without without giving any uh, clue. They can just give you this much fixed cost, find out how much variable and how much fixed inside that, and that use the high limit rate. I'm not sure you know very well this high limit. I think this is uh, so far. We happy with that. So let's move on to the next question. Okay, this is very, I think this is one of the questions very common in the exam. Over the question. So I would say, okay, before we start, we'll take a break. So let's take a break. We want to do very slow today. We want to make sure we understand every single question. So we will go very slow, but we want to make sure like uh, there is no question from this practice. So that the next practice, when you do at this one, number two, three, four, then you can do yourself. You just need to know the way, then you can do it. Let's take a break. Let's take a um, 25 minute break. We'll come uh, 40, so we'll come back 6 40. Let's take a 20 minute break. 25 minute break. We'll come back 6 uh, 40. Hello, How are you? Hello. Hello, Branka. Hello. Anybody hear me? All right, welcome back. So let's start our question with this one. The Task number five. This question is, uh, I would say, very common, and almost every time you're going to see this question on the exam. Uh, this is very, very like um, important question as well because it's content 15 marks. So you see, 15 marks will come from this chapter. That is your absorption and marginal costing and calculating the OAR, that is overhead absorption rate. So you need to be very, very careful when you calculate all of this, and you need to make sure you do not lose any marks from this chapter. Let's take this question. This question we cannot see in one page, so I think we have to write it down some information. Let's take the question first. <coughs> the first one here is says, quarter one, first paint limited, has the following information about the two profit centers. So they have two profit centers, this company, paint manufacturer and canning and packing. Then we have budgeted direct labor hour, budgeted machine hour. We have actual direct labor hour. We have actual machine hour. We have budgeted overhead and we have actual overhead. Then the first requirement we have here, calculate the budgeted overhead absorption rate. Calculate the budgeted overhead absorption rate. This word is very important. Budgeted overhead absorption rate for the paint manufacturer profit center. So they're asking for the paint and 
they said there is the machine hour. So for the paint manufacturer, we have to find the machine hour. Budget machine hour. On the other hand, they said that for canning and packing profit center based on the direct labor hour. So for the canning and packing, they said this is based on direct labor hour. So this is our direct labor hour. So for the paint based on the budgeted machine hour, machine hour, and for the canning, it's labor hour. So this portion, when you read the portion, you need to make sure you read the portion like very carefully so that actually you understand the meaning of that so that you can get the right figure. So we understand here our paint is a link to the uh, machine and the canning is a link to the direct labor and it's all budgeted. So that's fine. Let's write it down. Let's write it down. Some information so we need the budgeted information so what is the requirement here the requirement here is calculate the budgeted overhead absorption rate so that means calculate the oar overhead absorption rate calculate the oar overhead absorption rate for for the paint and for the can so let's do that all we need we need oar O A R that is overhead absorption rate. We need budgeted overhead, and we need activity. Now that activity could be machine hour or could be labor hour. If we talk only about the paint, for the paint, our budgeted overhead is one eighty five three. And our budgeted machine hour is 2966. That is my OAR for paint. The next one I have canning. Canning, the budgeted overhead is 223, 223060. And this one based on the labor hour. We take the labor hour, budget labor hour. That is eight eight six four. This one. So one eighty five, three seventy five divided two nine six six. That is sixty two point five. And the next one we have. Three two three zero six zero divide eight eight six four is twenty five point one six. So we have our OAR. Let's go down. We can write it down here if you like. So we said for our paint that is sixty two point five. For the canning and packing, 25.6. So this is for our overhead absorption rate. All right, so let's move to the next question. What is, what else we have here? What do we have here? Okay, this one says, let's put the question. Now, suppose for quarter two, now suppose for quarter two that the overhead absorption rate for the paint manufacturer profit center had been based on the direct labor hour. Okay, that's fine. The next quarter is depend on the, is based on the direct labor hour. And it was 25 per hour. Okay, that's fine. So overhead absorption rate is 28 pounds per hour. The actual overhead is this, that is 213. Uh, and the actual labor hour is 7,400 hours. What is the requirement? The requirement here is 
compute the following overhead incurred. That is actual overhead, that is incurred. Then we have overhead absorbed. How much overhead we absorb? That is based on the overhead absorption rate. And the difference, and after that we have to identify is it under or over. So let's do this one. Let's look at the question first and try to do that. So the first one we have, overhead incurred. So incurred means actual one. How much overhead actual incurred? That is Q13 to 100. Next one, overhead absorbed. How much overhead we absorb? How do you calculate that? Actual number of hours times so a, uh, overhead, the overhead absorption rate. That is 7,400, 7,400 times 28. So 7,400 times 28, that gives me 207,200. 207,200. How much of the difference? Minus 213, 200, 6,000. 6,000 is not different. But up to here, I'm sure all of you will be all right. But here, don't be rushed to identify the over and under. Don't be rushed. Here, you have to be really, really slow. Try to get the right answer. Always, you need to ask yourself what I do. This is the actual. Remember, overhead incurred is the actual. We have not to do it actual. You need to ask yourself what you did. This is the one you absorbed. Overhead absorbed. That's the budgeted one. So this is the one based on the budget. I have absorbed 207. Then my next question will be to me Did I absorb less or did I absorb more? Very, very careful. If you absorb less than the actual, then it's under. If you absorb more than the actual, this is over. So you absorb 207, and actual is 213. So you absorb less than actual. If you absorb less than actual, this is under actual. You do never look at the actual overhead income. Never look that. You always look yourself what you did. If you absorb less than the actual, this under. If you absorb more than the actual, this over. That's simple. Make it very simple. That's it. So actual budgeted difference is under. When you get the overhead absorbed, you always take the actual number of hours. Remember that. You take the actual number of hours, could be machine or could be labor. But you multiply with the OAR, that is overhead absorption rate. You always multiply with that. But you take the actual hour and compare with the actual overhead income. That's it. Number C. Number C is asking refer to the information for quarter one. So you have to go back to quarter one at the start of the task and complete the following sentence. In quarter one, Overhead for canning and packing profit center work, what? What was the amount? Or is it was under or over? So let's go and check that. So I hope you remember that. How much was the application rate? So let's go back to that question and find it out. So the canning, you can take so the canning and packing. So let's do this one. For so canning and packing, the actual overhead, we can see that is 215. That is 215. So let's have a look at how much was the budgeted. I think this one, we have calculated 25.16. That was our overhead addition rate for that, OAR, 25.16. So let's go back and try to find it out. That's my actual overhead for the canning. That's my actual overhead. For the canning, I have my actual. I need to find the overhead absorption, but it is one. So I'll take it. 
when you click on the cloud, it will also be based on what? It was based on labor or it was based on machine. So it can be hard. The proportion said for the canning, the overhead adjustment rate OAR will be based on the labor hour. That's why it's taking the labor. If they say the machine, we take this one, actual machine or this one. If the person said labor, we go for the labor. If the person said machine, we go for the machine. So we can say now overhead addition rate is 25.16. So 8,000 is the actual number of hour. So 8,000 times 25.16 that we calculated before. This is our overhead addition rate. So 8,000 times 25.16. That is is zero one two and zero. This is my overhead absorbed overhead absorbed, and my actual is two one five four zero four. Now again, same question you have to ask. We're not going to look this one. We'll look this one. Did we absorb more or less? You can see we absorb 201, but the actual is 215. So we absorb less than actual. We absorb less than actual. If we absorb less is under actual. How much is the difference here? Minus 215, 404. That is 14,124. So under absorb. So let's go back there and try to write the count here. 40,124, and that is under absorbed. All right. So this question is not difficult, but you have to be patient, you have to use it really, really slow, especially when you talk about under and over absorbed. Okay, let's move to the next question, class six, 25 marks. Let's make it a bit smaller so that you can see a bit more on page. Okay, let's take this question. The CPL is planning to launch a new water resistant system water radius, but from a kitchen and this is all WL52, that's the product called. This will be manufactured in batch. Batch means when you make a lot of identical product at the same time. For example, if I make this thing, if I make same 1000 thing, this one, that means I'm making in a batch. So in making the same product, maybe the different size, but in a batch. In every batch, how many products will be there? 50,000 can. So at the same time, you process 50,000 can. The following cost estimates have been produced per batch of WR52. The following, the following cost estimates have been produced per batch of WR52. WR52 is the product name. Let's have a look at this one. Direct material per batch. Direct material per batch, so it's my direct cost, direct labor per batch, that's my cost for the whole 50,000. Variable 84,000, fixed 84, admin selling distribution 41. That's my total cost. That's fine, there's no problem for that. Let's look at what is the requirement. The first requirement here, they said, calculate the estimated prime cost. Remember the prime cost? Prime cost all about the direct cost. Direct cost. All the direct cost together we call it prime cost. So here we can see we have two direct costs, one and two. So 
this two together with the prime first. So let's try to do that. We have one zero three plus one zero five, but it's two zero. This is our prime first for batch W. In the next one is stage, calculate the estimated marginal production cost. Marginal production cost. What is marginal production cost? All the variable cost. Marginal production means all variable cost. Marginal production cost means all the variable cost. If I add all the variable costs, I have one, two, and three. This three are variable costs, even two. I'm going to add this three. One zero three plus one zero five plus one zero four. That is two ninety two. Two ninety two. All right. So this is the marginal cost. Marginal means all the variable costs. The next one we have calculate the estimated full absorption cost of one batch. So they're asking the estimated cost for full, full estimated cost of one batch. So when we say the absorption costing method, full absorption costing for the full batch, one batch, one batch means 50,000 can even take in one batch, you make 50,000. So when I said full cost, full cost means absorption costing. Even the question said full cost, you have to understand the question asking to calculate the absorption cost. If they said absorption costing, you understand absorption costing. The difference between the absorption costing and the marginal costing is in absorption costing, in AB, inside of the absorption costing, there is a portion of fixed cost. Inside of the MC, marginal costing, there is no fixed cost. This is the main difference, isn't it? In MC, inside of the marginal cost, there is a no fixed cost included. Inside of the absorption costing, there is a portion of fixed cost. Now, what type of fixed cost inside? Very, very careful. Only the production fixed overhead. Production fixed overhead, not the admin and selling. So admin selling, this overhead cost not included inside of the absorption cost. So when we're talking about up to the fix, so this one, this one, this one, plus the fix. Who's fix? Only the production fix, not the non-production one. Non-production on selling finance, this cost will never come inside of the production cost. So let's do this one. So we can add this one, two number two, plus three, four, I think it will give you this one, two, two number six. All this four is our full cost, our absorption cost. Okay, the next one is said, number D, calculate the estimated marginal production cost of one can. They're asking for the one can. That's not difficult, isn't it? Total marginal cost is 292. If I divide by 50,000, it will give me the cost of one can. Not difficult. So, 292 is the total cost, and divide 50,000 will give me our unit cost. So one can cost will be 584. So 292 divided 50,000 is 584. Then they said full cost of one can if you use that cushion costing. So we're going to do the same thing. 326 divide 50,000. 326,000 divide 50,000. It will give you six sound five two. Six sound five. Six. That's it. That's not difficult to do. That's really easy question to know. Okay, so there is some question for the theoretical type. Uh, please have a little discussion. I will give you a minute, then we're gonna do it together. We'll have a little discussion. It's a really straightforward question, and always in the exam, there will be part of the question from the theory, so you have to be there. Make sure you know it. So, 
10. Let's have a look at this one. Which of the following cost? Which of the following cost would never be included in inventory valuation? Obviously, as the question said, we're going to use um, uh, product cost. There are two types of cost. One is product cost, one is period cost. What is the difference between these two? Product and period. Product cost means when the cost is already inside of the product. And the period cost means, this is a product cost, and the period cost means, period cost is the cost is outside of the product. The period cost is always outside of the product. And the product cost is always inside of the product. Which cost never be included on the CPR inventory valuation is the period cost. So period cost normally we never include it inside. And the period cost is the outside of the product. The next question. Which of this is an example of unethical behavior by one of the CL, one of the CLP accounting technician? I think you like this one. I don't have to explain. All of you have a very strong ethical principle, and I'm sure when you will be accountant, you will be very, very like um, strong from the ethical point of view. You will never done something wrong. This is very important. So uh, do something wrong. Uh, the day you do something wrong, that means like from that day, you'll start doing something, everything wrong. The reason is like the day you done one mistake for your friend or for your family, if you've done something wrong, from that day, it will be inside of your head. From, uh, from that day, it will be inside on your heart, like I have done something wrong already. So what's the point if I do another one? So you need to make sure like whatever you do, as as like as long as possible, make sure you try to avoid all of this unethical principle you learn from this ethics. You have to make sure you follow that. Not as a not as the guidance say, as a accountant, as a as a person you need to make sure as a profession you need to make sure account like your ethical principle is very strong. So which of this which of this is an example of unethical behavior? Calculating profit objectively rather than subjectively. Now I want you to explain this two words, uh, objectively and subjectively. Subjectively is something is just estimated. Like subjectively, I would say if I want to make it more simple, I said it cannot be realized. We called it unrealized profit. Unrealized profit means the profit are on the paper, but not in the in the actually in the business. Sometimes when you make a lot of sales and all the sales is on credit and there is a lot of profit on the financial statement, but actually there is no cash in the bank. So this is called subjectivity. So subject, subjectivity is something is kind of uh, just estimated, you can say, and sometimes the profit, all the sales you make, the customer can return everything to you and all the profit will be gone. So, calculating uh, the profit on safety really rather than subjectivity. I think it's a good work, so accountants should do it. It's not accountants shouldn't do it. So, this is the one accountants can do it on. This one, down it, uh, it is the one that Then, valuing inventory as, valuing inventory so as to maximize profit, figure profit. So, basically, you know the technique, you know if you use the FIFO. For the first year, your profit will be higher if there is no opening for the inventory. If your uh, if your client asks you, uh, listen, I want to show a very good profit for the first year, so that next year I can have a, a good loan from the bank, or I want to sell my share to the market so people can see there is lots of profit in my company. I want to show a lot of good profit. Can you do that for me? So, if you do that, if you value the inventory because of you want to maximize the inventory profit, so you have to maximize the period profit, that's going to be unethical, isn't it? That's not going to be ethical. You cannot do it, just to like manipulate something to show someone uh, the result and you try to uh, manipulate the accounting system and you show more profit. So this is unethical behavior. Then treating CPL costs are confidential. This is obviously ethical thing. You should keep all the things ethical, uh, confidential. So this is not the one unethical. 
allocate cost between product, product objectivity. This is, I think, this also typical. So only this one you cannot do it. This is only typical. Go to number H. Why might CPL decide to allocate its cost between the product of different departments? Now, sometimes this question uh, uh, for the normal people, like um, they can ask you, like BMW, for example, the BMW is one company. Why not all the costs paid by BMW? Same thing, isn't it? If we separate the cost to different departments, rather than not separating, if I put all the costs for BMW, it's the same story. It said that all the costs have to be paid by BMW. So why? what's the point of separating the cost to different departments? The reason is, you need to identify the key performance indicator for every single department. So you want to see which department doing good, which department doing uh, not very well. Otherwise, if the company not doing well, you can to blame all the departments. You'll say maybe the selling department is bad, the production department is bad, the admin department is bad, but this is not the case. To identify, to identify the cost for a specific department, to identify where is the problem, that's why it's very important you need to segment the cost. Segment means you divide the cost and you put the cost to the right, and right department so that you can see which department carrying how many costs. And you can take the decision more specifically, more accurately. So here we say, to comply with the company standard, no. To reduce our limit relation, no. To report segment profit and loss, system one. We basically want to report every single department separately, segment All right, the next one we have, triple Paint manufacturing department is a profit center. Which of the following does its management control? So, if it is a profit center, we are we are only dealing with cost and revenue. If this is an investment center, we're dealing with cost, profit, with, uh, cost revenue, and investment. If this is only cost center, then only dealing with cost. You need to make sure you, you know the definition. If this is a cost center, you only dealing with cost. If you are a profit center, you're dealing with cost and revenue. If there's an investment center, then you're dealing with cost, revenue, and interest. So you're dealing with, for the profit center, you're dealing with cost plus revenue. Variable cost, cost and revenue. So this is the one. Cost and revenue. So you're dealing with both cost and revenue. All right, so this is kind of the theoretical part. You can see this question is kind of a theory question. So, task number seven, let's have a look at this one. Task number seven, 16 marks. The first question is contribution. This is quite easy, isn't it? Contribution means selling price minus variable cost. Selling price less variable cost. Selling price less variable cost. So, you would say all the selling price, yeah, this one. Selling price, less variable cost. Then it's a break even revenue. Break even revenue, you have two things. One is break even revenue, one is break even volume, isn't it? Volume means the unit. Volume means the unit, and the revenue means the value. Volume means the unit, revenue means the value. Break even revenue, we know break even is the way, so there is no profit, no loss. So we say here, sales revenue, we're talking about the revenue. You choose the revenue, you not take the volume. If the question said break even volume, we take the sales volume. But the question said break even revenue, we take the revenue. Sales revenue, where there is neither profit or no loss. There is zero, isn't it? No profit, no loss, or we taking the revenue. So no profit, no loss, sales revenue, no profit, no loss. Then margin of safety. Margin of safety is we know like from the actual cell, actual cell minus break even is our MOS, isn't it? Margin of safety. Actual cell minus break even. So it's the excess, excess of actual cell over the break even cell. Is the one. Excess of actual cell over break even cell. So from the break-even cell, whatever scale I make excess, this is my margin of safety. 
that's not difficult. So let's move on to our next bit. All right, so uh, let's do this. Let's do this question. So let's read the question. TPL manufacture MP16, there is a product, whatever it is. A marine tank for boat. Okay, that's fine. MP16 is made in batch 10,000 can. At the same time, they make 10,000 can. Each of which, each of which, sold for five pounds. The selling price is five pounds. The following cost, the following are the costs involved in manufacture. Okay, that's fine. Direct material, direct labor, variable overhead, and fixed overhead. We have all the costs. That's absolutely fine. Let's do the requirement. The first requirement said calculate the break even volume of this. Break even volume. Volume means unit. Very careful this two words. They can ask you break even volume. They can ask you break even sales volume. The volume means asking for how many units. How many units if you can sell, then you will be in a position you are not making profit and you are not making sales. So how many units if you can sell? Then you will be in a position that means you are not making a sell, uh, not making a profit, or not making a loss. So we know the formula, isn't it? So we know break even formula. So B E T break even point. Fixed cost divide contribution to you R unit. C U T U contribution R unit. Fixed cost divide contribution per unit. Now we have our fixed cost anyway, that is 57,000. So we know the fixed cost, that is 57,000. But we don't know our contribution per unit, isn't it? What is the formula for contribution per unit? Selling price minus variable cost. Contribution per unit, formula is selling price minus variable cost. We have the selling price, that is 5 pounds. But we don't know the variable cost. Let's find it out the variable cost per unit. I have a total variable cost here. Let's add all of this. 4810 plus 7508 plus 7682. Let's do some 4810 plus 7508 plus Seven six thirty two. That is twenty thousand. The total variable cost is twenty thousand. For how many units? Ten thousand units. Divide by ten thousand. So our unit the variable cost will be two. Two variable cost per unit. So I take the two here, and I get my contribution. That is three. The contribution per unit is three. So put the three here back. Fixed cost fifty seven. Contribution three. So fifty seven thousand divided three. That is nineteen thousand units is my break even. So nineteen thousand ten. If I can sell nineteen thousand ten, I will be in a position no profit, no loss. Then calculate the break even sell selling here. That's very easy. So you have the unit now. All you need to do, you need to multiply with the selling price. That is 5 pounds per unit. 19,000 times 5. That will give you 95,000 pounds. So you're looking for the value of the break even sales unit. So you know the selling price. Multiplying by the selling price, it will give you the value per unit. Like total uh, sales revenue for uh, break even revenue. Okay, let's move on the bottom. Is it relevant to that or is it a new question? Okay, let's 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 go down. Okay, let's do this question. The CPL also manufacture and sell marine paint MP17. This is manufactured in batch 12,000 cans. So at the same time, you can make 12,000 and make a contribution 
put thousand part as put. If I want to get the contribution part, yeah, and I can just divide it. Isn't it put two thousand divide twelve? I'm not sure we need it or not, but we can find it out how much the contribution. Oh, yeah. That is two point five. Fixed cost fifty six thousand and the target profit thirty one thousand. That's fine. That's not a problem. The first question is calculate the margin of safety. M O S margin of safety. If CPL sell twenty thousand cash. So the formula for the margin of safety, MOS, margin of safety, is actual L minus break even on asking for the unit and swallow the break even unit. Let's do this one. We already know the actual cell. Actual cell is 20,000 can. So 20,000 can. But we don't know the DEP, isn't it? So you need to calculate the DEP that is taken in point. So DEP, fixed cost, divide contribution, R unit. We already have our fixed cost that is 56,000. 56,000. And the contribution for unit we already calculated before 2.5. So 56,000 divide 3.5, it gives us 16,000. 16,000. So take the 16,000 here, that is my DEP. So 20,000 is actual, 16,000 is the DEP, and the margin of safety is 4,000. That's easy. Then we have how many can of MP17 must CPL sell to reach the target profit. We know the target profit formula, isn't it? Target profit is 12. Fixed cost plus target profit divide contribution per unit. Yeah? You know the formula is very easy. For the fixed cost, we have that is 56,000. The target profit we already have in the portion, 31,500. If you want 500 and the contribution per unit, same 2.5. So 56,000 plus 31,500 divided 3.5. That will be 25,000. Yeah, so if you can sell 25,000 can, then we have a profit. How much? I do want to Try to understand this question. Why are you doing this? It's really important. If you are in a business and if you want to know how many, let's say you are selling a pen. And if I tell you how many pen you need to sell in order to find it out, you are in a, not in a profit or not in a uh, loss, so you are in break even. So you can calculate the break even. You can tell me I have to sell this amount of pen. Probably in a position I'm not making profit or loss. But if someone asks you, like, how is business going? So you said it's still I'm in loss. To tell that, you have to identify your break even. If you decide that this month I want to make a profit of 10,000, how you calculate how many units you need to sell? How many products you have to sell? How you can identify it? If you don't know, so you, if you know how to calculate that target profit, you can tell, okay, if I can sell uh, 50,000 pen, I can have a profit 10,000 pen. You need to know the ways. It is very important. It is really helpful in real life business. Okay, let's move on to our next topics, our next question. Number eight, that's I think this really easy to identify what is the fixed cost, the definition of variable cost, this time. Okay, the fixed cost, what is fixed cost? Let's uh, try to find out the fixed cost. Increase in total, sales volume increase. No, fixed cost never increase. Fixed cost decrease when the volume increase, isn't it? For example, if I said my fixed cost is 10 pounds and I make a uh, Two unit. So fixed cost per unit will be five. If I say my fixed cost is ten pound and I make five unit, so my fixed cost per unit will be two. If the volume is increased, you see increasing the volume, my fixed cost per unit is decreasing. Decrease in total as volume increase, decrease in total 
in total no the in total is not changed if my rent is ten thousand the rent is ten thousand anyway if i make one unit or hundred unit the rent is fixed so it's not decreased in total no that's not true increase per unit as selling price increase no it's never increased if the selling price increase decrease per unit as selling price increase there is no relationship with the selling price decrease per unit as volume increase yes this is the one so it is decrease if the volume increase if i make more units my fixed cost per unit will be less so i'll say this is option number five right here five variable cost you know all of what you know is variable cost is increase in total as volume increase if i make more i have more variable cost if i make less i will have less variable cost if i don't make anything my variable cost will be zero this is number one semi-variable cost in semi-variable cost some portion are fixed some portion are variable inside of the semi-variable cost we have a portion of fixed cost and we have a portion of variable cost is next so let's have a look at this one. made up fixed and variable cost this is number six semi-variable cost made up of fixed and variable both inside of the semi-variable cost there is a portion of uh, fixed and portion of variable shape cost you already know the stop cost up to a certain level up to a certain level the cost is fixed after that it keeps changing so you say it's fixed for a certain volume range only so it's a fixed for a certain volume range only this is seven make sure you are very good at this definition uh, it will help you if you answer this type of question coming to exam let's move on to the next topic Okay, number nine. Number nine it says budget. I think that's really easy question. Hopefully, let's see. Don't worry about the question. Is big. The question is easy. That's the main thing. Our CPL had budgeted to manufacture and sell fifty thousand can. The fifty thousand can is a plan to make and sell. However, due to shortage of solvent. Solvent means they don't have enough cash or they don't have solvents that they don't have enough money. It was only able to manufacture and sell 45,000 cans. Okay, that's fine. Total manufacture costs are all variable except fixed. So all the costs are variable except the fixed overheads. That's fine. Let's do this one. Let's complete the table for the flex budget. Okay, resulting in, in the variance. variance. have to calculate the variance. Let's so show the actual variance for the sales revenue and each cost. Headed variance was fine. So we're going to show the variance. We already know it, isn't it? We're going to find the difference between the flex budget and the actual. If my actual is more than budgeted, this is advanced variance for the cost. If my cost is less than, like the actual cost is less than the budget, it is a, uh, it's a favorable. Only for the sales is different. If my income is more than the actual, it's good for me. If the income is less than the actual, it's bad for me. Let's do this one. You can do that. It's not a problem. As the adverse variance must be denoted with a minus sign or bracket. So you have to show here, if it is adverse, you have to show minus or bracket. Anything you like. Enter zero where any figure is zero. So you need to put the zero if something is zero. Okay. Let's read this question. Let's do it together. So the first one, we have the original budget. We're going to follow the original budget to complete the flex budget. So let's do this one. So first we're talking about sales revenue. That's my number of can we have sold. That is 45,000 units. I have to find the selling price per unit, isn't it? So my selling price per unit, I would say 225 triple zero divide 50,000. Because I have sold, I have sold all these 50,000 units for 225,000. How much I sold for each? So I said 225 divide 50,000. So 55 divide 50,000. That is 4.5 per unit. My selling price is 4.5 per unit. And I'm going to multiply with 45,000 
to get the figure for this line. How much is the size revenue for 45 per unit? Size scale to be 5 unit, and that should be 2,500. Now you can have it, you can find the difference. My actual is 207 and my budget is 202. So I have done the good, isn't it? So I would say 202 minus 207, 400. The difference is 4,900. 4,900, and this is good for me. Because my actual income is more than I have expected. It's good for me. It's a favorable. You don't have to write anything. Only if it's a very minus, if it's an adverse variance, only that case you have to put the minus or bracket, other than you have to do it. I'll talk about the cost. The same way we do find the par unit and multiply with that. So 45,200 divide 50,000 times. 45,200 divide 50,000 units times 45,000 406. Please make sure you check yourself as well in case I got the wrong calculation. 406, Here you can see 406, so that is 40,000, and my actual is 46. That's a really, really big difference. So let's find the difference. 46, 1, 2, 4, that is 5480. 5, and that is from minus because my actual is really more than I expected. Really, really good figure. Very well overhead, let's do this one. 36,400 divide 50,000 times 45,000. So 36,400 divide 50,000 times 45,000. That is 32,760. 32,760. And this is, uh, I think this is our uh, favorable because that's quality less than the other Good, because we have a less cost. Fixed overhead would be the same. Any, anyway, so fixed is fixed. So we'll say uh, 74,800, but my actual fix is 75. So it is more than that. So I have minus 500. Is that good? And obviously, the profit from the operation, what we do from this one, we take all of this cost. So from the revenue, we minus all the cost. So 2,500 minus all of this. So let's do that. 202, 500, minus 40,000, Minus 32, 760, minus 74, 800, that is 54,260. And the total, so that's my total. So this is the way we can calculate the flex budget. It's very, very, very common in the exam, the flex budget. So we have to follow the ordinary budget to calculate the flex budget. And after that, you find the difference you find the difference between the actual and the flex. If the actual is more than the flex for the cost purpose, it will be minus, it's adverse. If the sale is better than the uh, expected, actual is more than expected, then it's favorable. So here I have only one, is two is favorable, that is my sales revenue, this is good for me, favorable, and the variable overhead is good for me, favorable. My direct material is also really like uh, this big there we have a minus and this over it also thousand as well. Let's look at uh, what else you have here. Okay, let's find out the reason. Number B it says referring to your answer for part A, which of the following, which of uh, which one of the variants has been greatest greatest impact Increasing the profit with the self saving, isn't it? The self saving is very, really, really good. This one was like, I think 4,900 was 4,900 was favorable because no, it's very greatest impact for my increasing my revenue. Which of the following might have caused a variance for the direct material and direct labor cost? So, what do you think? Like, what could be the reason? 
so you have a negative impact. I can do that here, but so what is the reason you have? I put this in natural time, so why your natural time is minus four, uh, four, five, four, eight, zero, let it just minus, why it was minus? Because in metal price? No, if the metal price is a big piece, I'll be happy. I can buy it in cheaper price. Because employees pay no increased metal price, of course, is the one. If the metal price gone up, and I have to pay more price. So my plan was, for example, I'm going to make the raw material 10 pounds per kilo. But after three months, material, raw material price will become like 20 pounds. I have to pay more to buy the material. That's why my cost is more. This is the reason. All right, so that's it. So let's move on to the next question. If you have any, the, the last question we have, this question number 10, uh, this is the last question. The last question we all have have from the decision making uh, appraisal. So we all have expect like 20 more questions from the last chapter, but it's not going to be always easy like this one. You have to make sure you practice well and make yourself ready. So any question come 10, you can. Okay, uh, before I start, I want to tell something like all this method we have payback, NPV, IRR, and overall. This all these three methods, payback, NPV, and IRR, if if NPV says something, you will go always with something that. If NPV uh, says something, you always follow that. For example, uh, payback. NPV and the IRR. So out of this three, I would say this two, for example, they say this two are, they are the minister and he is the prime minister. So whatever they said, if they said don't accept the project, do not accept, do not accept, but if the NPV said accept it, we'll go with that. So if they give you something and they said, okay, now payback, payback said rejected, IRA said rejected, and the NPV said accepted, what should be your decision? Do you say accepted? Because NPV is the prime minister. NPV is the most priority will give in the decision making process. Please remember that. NPV is the top priority. Doesn't matter whatever the other two say. If NPV said something, you always go for that. Okay, let's have a look at this one. So the payback, what is the question here? CPL is considering a possible capital investment in the project. It will be based its decision upon using the fee appraisal method. The results of which are shown below. Appraisal method, payback, and an error. This is the note. The discount rate is 15%, that is cost of capital. Discount rate is 15% cost of capital. Company policy. 2.5 years. So if we get it, if we get the money back within 2.5 years, we'll accept the project for the payback. Payback is only only concern about how quickly money will come back. The company set the policy. If we can get the money back within two and five years, we're gonna accept the project. If it is more than that, we reject the project. NPD company policy, except if positive. If the entity is positive, even plus one. If the entity said plus one, so positive, not the minus, will accept the project. That's the company policy. Either the company policies must exceed cost of capital. So the company cost of capital is 15%. So our return has to be more than 15 because our cost is 15. If we get less than 15, it will be a loss. So we have to make sure we get more than 15. At least we can pay the cost and we can have some money for us. Here's the company policy, pay back the road. If it is more than two and a half years, do not accept the project, reject the project. NPV, if it is positive, if it is positive, accept the project. And I have an internal rate of return. If it is more than cost of capital, then accept it. If it is less than that, do not take it. But out of these three, if payback and I have said do not take, and if my NPV said take it, I'll go for that. So let's have a look at the first one, payback. The projected result is says, Three years, our company policy is 2.5, but the projected result for this investment three years, we're not going to take it. So we said if any project 
do not give us the recommendation 2.5 years, we will reset the project. So we said, uh, reset, reset. Okay. reset as more than 2.5 years. Reset as more than 2.5 years. If you want to reset the appraisal, reset the project, because the return is more than two years, it's three years, we said. So I'm not going to take it. Our time is 2.5 maximum. NPV, they said, except if positive. Now I can see it's 50,000 pound positive. 50,000 pound plus. I mean, accept it. I'll say accept as positive. Accept as positive. As soon as it is positive, I'll accept it. IRR, they said, must exceed the cost of capital. My cost of capital is 15. And this project the return is 14. I'm gonna I'm gonna reject it because the return is less than my cost. After reject, why reject reject as, as less than cost of capital? Reject as less than cost of capital. Now, after doing all of this, the overall decision will be still accept the project because the NPV is the more priority one. They said except, except as for most info, most important investment criteria. I said except as our most in, important investment criteria. Even though my payback and my um, I have said, do not accept, you will still go for it because NPD has the more priority. Whatever NPD said, who you will follow that. All right, so this is it, I believe. Yeah, this is it. Obviously, uh, we have some more practice as well. Practice meant two, three. Please make sure you practice all of this, all of this. This paper is always tricky. Management accounting is not easy paper at all. So all the people you have done so far, this one of the tricky one for level three. If you pass this one, I can guarantee you other paper will not be difficult. Other people will find like very easy. Some of you will start from this paper in level three, you start with the difficult one. So if you can go with that, if you can cope with that, I can tell you next paper will be not difficult for you. It's gonna be quite straightforward, at least uh, easier than that. All right, so I hope like we have some idea now uh, what type of question we expect in the exam and uh, how to re answer that, how many marks will be from uh, which question and how many facts we're expecting and how to be probably uh, find it out the best way to the good answer. So even if you do really slow, you don't have to be really fast, you don't have to be really rushed in the exam. If you know the answer, you can find it easily. But you need to make sure only only the thing can make you more confident than practice. So if you do a lot of practice, that will make your confidence really high. Now the exam will be really confident and you will be like, you know, boom, you'll finish your exam and you'll get a very good score. So make sure you've done real practice for this paper and you're expecting the exam will be start from end of the next month at the end of the June. Hopefully uh, you have enough time for this paper. This will be good. Like, uh, the next paper is going to start that with indirect tax, so that's not typical paper. So even with the easy paper you're doing the class, and top of that, behind this, you can keep practicing this paper as well. And when we're ready, after three, three or four weeks, you can do this exam. So you have some time for yourself for, for your practice. So I would say to make sure you go and do any practice for this paper. This is a very cheap paper. So uh, from the question bank, you do a lot of practice. If you start in anywhere in the in the question bank, email me and I will definitely explain to you and try to explain to you why it is that. All right, so that's it for today. We're gonna to finish our lesson today. I hope uh, this division lesson was helpful for you. And uh, it was like a quite, um, um, I would say like I try to explain as people as possible. I try to go as uh, slow as possible so that you understand everything. Uh, but you can try this assessment once again by yourself and try to see if anything is still have question. You can always go back to me by email. Now, definitely try to reply to you in detail. 
Alright, so if you have any question, you can write it down for me right now. Otherwise, like I have to say, you thank you very much for joining me today, and uh, I'm gonna see you next week. Next week, uh, Thursday, I'm gonna see you uh, with the new paper that we get in the text, uh, and of course, like I'm gonna send you the book to all of you by email. And uh, you are welcome to join for next week's new paper. And if I send you early, maybe I'm going to send you like uh, before the lesson. You can have a look at the That's not really big, very small. You can do really quick and we will do really slow. And we will complete this book. So once the exam is open, you can do exam, like two exams in a very quick time. If you want it, time you pass this, the next week you pass that. That would be really good. Right, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, um, I'll see you next week. Take care of yourself. Stay home. Stay safe.